Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mark with Spagabber Backpacking. Thank you for joining me tonight. So tonight we are finally going to do the Q&A session. I put out the request for questions a few weeks ago, got some questions in, was going to do it last week, but some stuff came up, kind of delayed that. Then this past weekend, just got done with. Uh, Beekeeper and I met up down in Louisiana, got in three days out on the trail, three nights in the hammocks, and uh, got back last night. So, wanted to go ahead and put this together, answer the questions, talk a little bit about that trip and the upcoming video with it. So, uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So, let's go. So before we get into the questions, which I've got, I've got two pages of questions, not a ton of questions, but enough, and a lot of them revolve around kind of the same type of questions, so it seems like that's what you guys want to know about. The way that I'm going to do this is kind of more off the cuff than anything prepared. I've got just a few notes because there's some things that I really wanted to hit on. I've read through the questions, but I didn't go ahead and prepare any responses. I didn't really think through a lot of them. I wanted it to kind of be more like us sitting here having a conversation rather than some canned me reading from a, a sheet. Um, so that's the way that we're going to do this. But first, this weekend. So this weekend, I took a trip down to Kasachi National Forest, met up with Beekeeper. We picked that location because it was midway between both of us, about seven hours for each of us to get there. Then we spent three days, uh, got there late Thursday night spent the night right kind of near the, tra near the trailhead within a half mile of the trailhead and then uh, got all our stuff together the next morning and headed out for about a 30 mile loop give or take a little bit had a great time weather was great all except for the last night now <laughs> the weather turned quick and it was pretty nasty for a while and because of that it changed some of my thinking or some of my gear and that's something that I will actually be talking about in the question and answer but I think it's a video you guys are gonna like it's probably gonna be a little bit longer it was three days I didn't do a ton of filming but I did enough that I I don't think I want to split it into two videos but one video is gonna be a little bit longer so expect it probably be a half hour to 45 minute long video rather than the, the typical one um, so a little bit longer on that one but I think you guys are gonna like it and, and if you watch it stick through towards the end to see about this storm that that rolled in and and how we dealt with it and then the aftermath of that the next day what the uh, what the storm left us to deal with so something pretty cool you guys are gonna want to check out so let's go ahead and just roll into these questions so the first question actually wasn't posted on the Q&A request or on Facebook. This one was actually on a different, just a different video, but I, I thought it was fitting. It's from Alex Banks, and he actually has a couple other questions that are down in here uh, that semi-relate to it, but not quite. So his question, so what is your top three? And I believe he's talking about the top three hammocks. Uh, then he says, I have a Hammock gear, zero degree quilt on my doorstep waiting for me. It's going to be really cold this weekend, so I'm going to test it out Friday night in the woods. And he actually goes a little bit further into that in one of the questions that he posted. So we'll get to that in a minute. But top three, I believe he's referring to hammocks. And I think I've made it pretty clear on the last couple of, uh, of videos where I stand with those. So the top three, in no real particular order at this point, are the Dream Hammock Sparrow the Dutchwear Gear Chameleon, and the Sheltoe Half Shell Zip. So those those are the three. And actually, if you were watching, or if you were on Facebook today, I actually put up a post that pretty much said, go check these out if you guys are looking for a hammock. All right, Crazy Kev 5 asks, if there are any big hikes for, for 2018? He's actually got uh, three or four questions in here. We'll talk about those. To start with that one, well, I'm not sure. There will be hikes. There will be some, some good hikes. There will be some bigger hikes. I don't have any specifically planned right now. So we were talking about 
a family trip to California, which then uh, a few of us were going to kind of turn into a backpacking trip while while my family was visiting family out there. We'd go hit the Sierras, maybe do Yosemite to uh, or Tahoe to Yosemite or the Tahoe Rim Trail or part of the JMT. But we're not sure whether or not that's going to happen with the move and everything else coming up. So we've got some other other ideas kind of brewing right now. We were actually just talking about it on this during this weekend on the trip. Uh, Beekeeper and I were talking about it. And then today on Facebook through messages, uh, Sherpa Man and uh, Sir Pax a lot, which I think he's got a new trail name. I think Beekeeper and I gave him a new trail name, which is whip snake so if you're watching this uh, sorry your trail name has now changed and it's whip snake um, but we've been talking about one maybe in the Kentucky West Tennessee who knows somewhere in that general area I think we're we're looking at right now kind of because it's centrally located we've got New York DC Florida and Oklahoma all trying to find a place to go together so centrally located We've also thrown around the idea of Colorado, California, uh, Utah, who knows, we'll figure out a place. But yes, there will be big, some big hikes, some really big hike, just don't know what it is yet. Favorite gear from 2017. So I'm thinking if there is a, man, if you would narrow that down to a, <laughs> A specific category maybe we could talk about it uh, I think right off the bat two that kind of pop up my Petzl Actic core headlamp really like that really like that um, so that's probably one and then man I don't know probably the chameleon you know the fact that that was pretty much released in 2017 late 2016 I got it but I don't think it was really actually released to the public. I think Kickstarter ended or somewhere around the early early 2017. So I'm gonna go with with that being one of my favorites. Uh, I think it was a, a a good innovative type piece of gear that that was put out there. Had some different features, ones that hadn't been seen on on some of the others. So I'm gonna go with that. Another YouTuber hike for 2018. So. I tried to get in on a hike next month, but with the move and going to Hang Con and some other stuff with work, just isn't gonna work out. So I'm gonna have to pass on the revisit to Laurel Highlands hiking trail with Frozen and Meerkat and of course Gary, probably shirtless Gary, even though it's January. But uh, I do think we'll figure out something. I know that Jax and I have talked Jack's drink water. We've talked a little bit about getting together to do something, and it may be something where Beekeeper, Jax, and I meet up somewhere in Alabama, Mississippi, somewhere around there, uh, to go hit a hit a trip. But we'll see. Uh, I, I'm sure that there will be one. I just don't have anything completely lined up. And then Crazy Kev says that he's super hyped up for next year. Me too. Uh, I think. Things are only going to get better. Things keep keep getting better. So let's just keep that rolling. Restless Outdoors. If you guys haven't checked out Restless Outdoors, go check out his his site or his uh his channel. Funny dude. I love it. I, I try to keep mine PG mostly PG PG thirteen. I I love that he just lets it lets it fly sometimes and uh yeah I, I enjoy watching it. What was your most favorite Christmas present as a kid? So I read this one and I was like, man, I have a terrible memory. I don't remember stuff. I know guys that I was in the military with that can tell you month and date, like month and year of every trip they took, every deployment they took, everything that went on, when they made certain rank, whatever. I don't remember any of that crap. I don't remember... I don't remember anything. I, I'm pretty bad when it comes to events, gifts that I've received, history, all that stuff. I'm, I'm kind of bad. I don't know. It, it doesn't stick around. 
So it took me a little bit of, of thinking, well, what, man, what presents did I, did I get that I liked? And then it came to me. I got a snowboard when I was in, I believe, fifth grade. Yeah, it was fifth grade. And Sherpa Man and I uh, used to used to live kind of near each other, and I had a slope, a, a little hill in the backyard, and we built a snowboard course with you know berms that went back and forth, and then a jump at the end. But it wasn't fast enough, you know, the snow just wasn't fast enough. The tr- the, the hill wasn't steep enough so we went out and we uh, we kept pouring water on it you know middle of winter in upstate New York pouring water on the snow and um, we essentially created a snowboard slash ice rink and um, I proceeded to go down this well, it's probably now more like a luge or a, a bobsled course than a snowboard trail run whatever and I hit the Hit the jump, flipped upside down, broke my arm. Uh, but that was my favorite. Got me into snowboarding, and uh, I I wanted a snowboard bad, and it was this, it was this really kind of crappy blue plastic snowboard. Definitely not anything you would want to take out to a a real mountain. And at one point, maybe a year down the road, um, you know, I knew that from skiing and other stuff, you needed a good sharp metal edge so I tried getting some uh, like some bent sheet metal and screwing it onto the sides of the snowboard didn't work out so well but I think that was my favorite one one oh this one's from Alex Banks only one hammock what would it be so I've given this one some thought and I know that no matter what way I go, someone's going to be offended or hurt. This is a tough one. This really is a tough one. So what do you go with? You know, you could go super ultra light because I like to go, I like to go ultra light. You could go for versatility and and something that covers the broadest range. And and really, if you're talking one hammock for everything, you probably want to go that route. So. For what I have, that that narrows it down to the the sparrow and the chameleon. So, the reason that I'm going to pick the one that I'm going to pick, so I'm going to go with the chameleon, and the reason is, if somewhere down the road, I want to lay the opposite direction, I do have that ability with the chameleon that I don't have with the sparrow. Beside that fact, they are very similar design function quality but for the simple fact that you know I may get hurt down the line and something's up with my back and I need to lay the opposite way or for some reason you know sometimes you like like certain foods and and years later you hate them or you hated them when you were a kid and you love them now so you know we're not we're not completely static as humans and so if I was if I was forced to pick one because of the the adaptability of it I would probably go with the chameleon now you may ask why wouldn't I go with something like the Sheltoe half shell zip that doesn't have a design designed lay direction you know set it up you can lay head right you can lay head left without changing anything so the difference the reason that I would choose the chameleon over that even though you would have to flip the top cover over and change the tie outs to get the chameleon to work either direction is that it comes with the top cover okay both of them would have bug nets but that top cover does add a little versatility in the cold weather so that's my answer so back to Alex Banks again this one kind of refers to the first question and I was talking about his uh, his top quilt stuff his hammock here zero degree so he says, I'm, ham- I'm camping out in the hammock this weekend in the woods. The low is going to be in the teens. I have a 30 degree hammock gear under quilt and a zero degree hammock gear top quilt. I'm going to start by layering my Costco quilt between my under quilt and my hammock. Do you think I will freeze my butt off? Um, so there, there is a way that you could figure out whether or not that's gonna work. And it's to take the loft height 
of your hammock gear 30 degree and the loft height of your Costco quilt, add them together and then go into the calculator to figure out how much, what temperature range that amount of loft will give you. And then I'd subtract probably 20% uh, from that height before I figured it out because as you put that down on top of each other, uh, it's probably going to cause a little bit of compression. Plus, the under quilt suspension is probably going to do a little bit more of the compressing. Now that's something else you're going to want to watch out for is you're probably going to want to loosen your under quilt. Now I know you've already done this. This was this weekend, but if you didn't do this and you got cold, think about it for next time. Loosen the suspension on your under quilt so that it doesn't compress your Costco throw to the point where it doesn't actually do anything because without the loft it doesn't do anything if you have you know an inch of inch of down but you can compress it down to less than a quarter inch you're not getting anything out of it so something to think about country rd do you have any upcoming diy gear projects <sighs> honestly no um i've said this to a couple of the well almost every cottage vendor that i've had the the chance the opportunity the pleasure to meet and converse with I will gladly pay them to put together the gear and deliver a high quality project a high quality product because I know I'm gonna end up spending more than that to do it myself while it sounds great on paper that I can go to rip stop by the roll get a design you know it's printed with with instructions on it whatever I can get the down or, or tie outs or whatever I'm doing. I'm gonna screw it up so many times, it will have cost less to go to the professional and it's gonna be a higher quality than anything I can put together. So um, other than like doing little stoves and stuff like that, maybe some food, that's, that's about as far as I'm going with the DIY stuff. Uh, so <laughs> hope you are looking forward to to some DIY, you know, backpacks or quilts or stuff, because that's that's not me. That's not not what I'm gonna do. Okay, I bar in eleven. I hope I didn't butcher that too bad. I'm looking to buy a winter under quilt in the near future. I've been flip flopping between the underground quilts Zeppelin zero degree or a hammock gear Econ zero degree. You did a quick video on the UGQ products. Just wondering if you have any further comments on it and which way you might lean between the two. The prices are almost identical, so that's not really a factor. Okay, so first I want to ask, are the prices really identical? So are we doing an apples to apples comparison? Are you looking at 850 to 850? Are you looking at goose down to goose down? Or are you looking at one to another? Uh, are, you both, are both of them the same length? Are both of them the same width? What does the weight look like? So if they're all relatively close on all of those, same fill power, same type of general weight, then you really aren't gonna go wrong with going with either one. I will say that I, I think for colder temperatures, I prefer the hammock gear. Now here's the reason why. It's that design that they have where it kind of fits to your butt I've had less problems with adjustability and cold spots with my hammock gear under quilt than I have with my underground quilts under quilt. Not to say once you get it adjusted, they're not, uh, once you get them adjusted and they're fit right to you and your hammock, they're both awesome, incredible pieces. I just think there's a little bit less fiddle factor and a little bit easier design on the suspension of the hammock gear plus that that design where it's kind of uh, there's a little bit of a droop to the butt area I think keeps from from there being any any extra compression of the down that you do get in some of the other under quilts so make sure before you do anything else make sure you are looking apples to apples uh, that you're not comparing two completely different things to each other. All right, the weekend hiker. So I'm, I'm a little bit 
Adam, I'm a little bit concerned about your question. Um, dude, how old are you? And you're asking this one? You may need a little help, dude. <laughs> Where do babies come from? Now he did he did pref or or follow this with an LOL and a uh, a winky smiley thing, and then so I was gonna I was gonna put together a whole spiel on how to do it, but I thought you know it's probably just easier. I'll ask Siri. So Siri said, "From their mothers." So where do babies come from? From their mothers. Hey, it's on the internet, so it's true. <laughs> Chris Rexwinkle, uh, who was the winner of the local Libre Gear quilt and the Cedar Ridge Outdoors hammock, which I've actually seen pictures of him using already. Uh, so Chris asks, I would like to know what's your favorite slash current preferred gear loadout. I know you're always taking and trying new things, and it probably changes case by case, but what are you grabbing for your last minute planning, throw gear in my pack situation? So yeah, it's it's absolutely going to change case by case, depending on the weather, depending on what's going on. Um, but I could, I could throw out some generalities out there. So the last couple of trips I've been using my ULA CDT. Wouldn't be my, I, I love that pack, but wouldn't be my preferred one. The reason I've been using it is that I sold my Appalachian Ultralight Cuban Fiber backpack and I'm having a new one, a custom one made, but there's been one piece of webbing, a, a specific webbing that he wants to use on it that has been back ordered, he's been waiting on it, uh, and I should be getting it sometime in the next week or so. But I've got a new backpack coming my way, you'll get to see a good review on it. I went with a little bit thicker. the Cuban or, or Dyneema hybrid fabric, uh, so a little bit thicker, went all black, it's going to be sweet. So I'm looking forward to getting that. That would be my, my go-to backpack. Knowing what I liked about the Appalachian Ultralight custom speed pack that I had, uh, and knowing that there's been some, some pretty good improvements since that one that are incorporated into this new one, I think I'm going to love it. So I can, I can already go ahead and say, yeah, that's what I'm going to gonna go with um, I made some upgrades to it some changes outside of what normally would be done that for me I think are gonna make it the top pack for me now if we're talking about so most of the time when I go out I try and go ultralight so let's talk about my my shelter system my tarp is gonna be the hammock gear standard tarp with doors it's gonna have some some Dutch bling on it now here's Here's the difference. Now I mentioned up front that because of this trip this weekend, some of my thought process has changed. So here's the piece that's changed. Got back from the trip last night. Today I ordered some new pieces from Dutch and here's what I did. So what you're gonna find on this video, the, the video that's gonna come out Thursday from the, the trip, uh, the Louisiana trip, this, this horrendous storm came up 60 maybe 70 mile an hour winds hitting my tarp I wasn't using a door tarp I was just using an open-ended hex tarp which was fine as long as you're set up so that the wind is hitting the side of your tarp and not going straight through it when a storm comes up you're gonna be okay I was fine there but what happened I've been using continuous ridge lines now for for a while and love the convenience of them here's the problem when you're hoping that a prusik is going to hold and any serious wind hits I actually have tried it on all of my tarps and all of them will move it's just the way that a prusik works there's not enough weight really being placed out of those prusiks to hold them the way that they need to and so when a big gust of wind hits it they pull in and now your tarp has loosened. The ridge line, instead of being taut and straight across, droops, your sides are now caving in and it's being flapped around by the wind. So what I've ordered are uh, some of the Dutch stingers. So I ordered two, so one set. 
of stingers with spliced on line. I went with 20 feet of spliced on line so that I could go about eight to nine foot on either side of the tarp to a tree to get this thing centered. And because I went with one set and I went with the stingers which have the little carabiners on them, I only need one set and I can swap it out between my hammocks as I need to. And then if I'm taking one of my kids with me, I can use a, uh, I can either use my fly, my, I've got my tarp fly set up that I can still use, or I could use one of my continuous ridge lines. It has worked, not my preferred choice anymore. I know a lot of people had said they had gone away from continuous ridge lines. I couldn't understand why. After this trip, I'm starting to understand why. A little bit off the topic, but you asked about my one go-to setup, and since I am now having a change to that, a change of heart on how I'm going with my uh, my ridge line, I, I figured I would I would go ahead and talk about that. So Appalachian Ultralight backpack, Cuban fiber, Dyneema, standard tarp with doors from Hammock Gear. The hammock is going to be the Dream Hammock Raven. It's in the 1.0 Robic XL. It's got the integrated bug net, but it's only zipped on one side, keeps the weight down. It is a nice compromise between a super lightweight, something like the, the half wit, which only had the, the half bug net, uh, which at times I found annoying. You couldn't put the, you couldn't have a, uh, a ridgeline organizer inside the netting portion with you because it clipped up to the net. So those are the types of things that made me kind of second guess that one and so I really do like the design of the uh, of the Darien so that's that's what I'm going with there for the suspension I'm going with the Dyneema one inch webbing if I happen to be in another state where I'm not allowed to do that I'm grabbing my Kevlar two inch tree straps with mule tape and to the attachment point is going to be a Beckett hitch on either one of those uh, so there's my suspension. As for my my quilts, I I really like. I've tried a bunch of different quilt manufacturers out there, and when you get into a lot of the cottage industry, it's very very minor details here or there that separate one from the other. So I've got I've got a fifty degree quilt set from. Uh, from local Libra gear. I've got a 40 degree set that is a mix of Jacks Are Better and Hammock gear. I've got a 20 degree set that is underground quilts. I've got a zero degree set that's hammock gear. I'm gonna pick which set I need based on the temperatures, period. Uh, there isn't a reason I went with any one of those in a specific temperature. It's just how it all worked out. Um, you know, I was talking with George from local Libra gear about the the operator series so because of the the lightweight stuff that's that's way, the way wet that went I had a zero degree incubator so I recently had Adam from hammock gear make me a custom 950 fill power zero degree burrow um, so that's how that went I had ordered a 20 degree I already had 20 degree top quilts but I, I ordered a 20 degree Zeppelin to kind of match up with that and then Underground Quilts sent me the Bandit which has the sewn closed foot box absolutely love that so my other 20 degree quilts got sold to help fund my zero degree 950 so really what I'm getting at is this is going to be dependent on the temperature because I'm not going to just pick one because of a name or the fabric or the weight it's got to be based on the temperature I want to be comfortable once I get below eh, 40 degrees so my 40 and my 50 degree are both three-quarter under quilts everything below that is full length uh, so let's see what else cook set um, unless I'm doing some dry baking which 90% of the time I'm not it's going to be the spagiver stove and the tokes it's the Thai light, the light version of the 550 milliliter mug pot. That's perfect. What else is in there? 
I mean, that's pretty much the, the basis of it. Uh, under cool talk for, yeah, so that's, that's kind of my go-to. Um, like you said, it would be tweaked based on gear I'm testing, different temperatures. For winter, I probably am going to go with one of the ones with, an, with a top cover. All right, from Maddie Outdoors, any international spots you'd like to get some hikes in? And then he says, I spent a month hiking the South Island of New Zealand in 2010. Well worth it, especially if you dig Lord of the Rings at all. Is there a specific piece of gear you use before going ultralight that you miss using? International spots. Well, I think you went to the spot that I really would love to go. I'd love to get out to New Zealand and get some hiking in there. Uh, that would be pretty badass. Um, as far as the... I, you know, I thought about this. Some, what piece of, of gear did I use before I went ultralight that I miss using? There's only one that I can think of that I liked to use that I wouldn't take with me anymore. But it's really... I don't know that it's so much that I went from ultra went from regular to ultralight, or it's that I went from a tent to a hammock. But I, I miss using uh, the little candle lanterns. You know, in the winter, those candle lanterns were awesome because you'd have them on inside of the tent, and it would actually heat the whole tent up. Um, and so it was like having a little heater. It was a light and a heater, so kind of dual purpose type deal. Um, but other than that, I really can't think of anything that I took with me that I don't currently use, just a lighter version of it. All right, Andrew Bullock. This may be too late. I've got two questions. You're not too late because I'm late, so you're early. I'm late. Uh, forgive me for getting personal, <laughs> but what's with the living in a van down by the river life? It's been like three months since you've been in a real house. You've mentioned recently you haven't seen your kids in that long too I know that'd kill me everything okay yeah everything's actually great right now uh, so if you didn't see how this all transpired how I ended up living in this camper here's the deal I was not happy at my job so I started looking for a new job found a new job a new job with great potential and with a great atmosphere it happens to be back in an area that that the family used to live in and actually most of the family was very very happy about the move none of us really were all that settled or happy about living in South Carolina so moving back to Oklahoma was actually a welcome change to us but we own a house in South Carolina that we had to sell the job wasn't that good that I could have a house in each state and uh, and still make it work so we had to sell the house in South Carolina. Long story short, just after Christmas, uh, we'll be closing on our house in South Carolina, closing on our house out here in Oklahoma, and by the first of the year, we will be living in a real house with, you know, like real walls, a roof, all that stuff, a yard. It's not on wheels. And my wife and kids will be back with me. Uh, I am really looking forward to it on Friday. I'm jumping on a plane. I'm heading out, and I'm going to get to see my family. Going to Virginia, we're all meeting there. That's where my brother, that's where my mother live. And so uh, I've got family driving down from New York. Wife and kids are driving up from South Carolina. We're all getting together and doing this. And then I'm flying back out here to close on the house. So it was a, a long process, three and a half, four months of being away from the family and uh, living this life but it's almost over uh, so is everything okay yes everything is okay and um, yeah nothing nothing was ever ever wrong uh, it's just you know you do the things you've got to do to get yourself into a better place and I'm in a much much better place now and I think I think me being in a much better place is going to be better for the entire family all right, I think he goes on, yeah. Number two, this is still Andrew. I built a couple spagiver stoves and I was having issues with mine sputtering fuel and dang near starting an inferno. I went back and was watching your video where you compare the heights. So I did, I did, you know, a DIY one, then I did one where I compared different heights. 
to figure out which one was most efficient, which one burned hottest, which one would boil fastest, all of that. So he refers to that. Uh, his 3 8 one burns like my 1 inch one with big old yellow flames shooting up. His pot's either the uh, Mini Build Designs Angry Troll pot without the flat bottom or a 750 Tox pot. And he says it performs like this on both. Plus it throws flaming liquid up on the windscreen. Any suggestions or directions? I really want to use that stove more often, but keep going back to the fancy piece for, for, for the performance issues. Now I totally get that. And Justin Tidwell had had some serious issues with his as well. He had, he had actually reached out to me and said, hey, when I'm using an, an ounce of fuel, uh, mine is spitting, it's spitting fuel all over the place and it's gonna create, it's gonna cause a forest fire if I use it out in the woods. So we talked through it a little bit and I will tell you that I have actually made some adjustments and changed, like I said up front as I was making these, so no two of mine are exactly the same. Some of them are taller than others, some of them are shorter than others. But if you're going to be using up to an ounce of fuel, you wanna make sure that your reservoir in the bottom, so the bottom can itself is a little bit taller than probably what I put in the, in the video. Next, I will say that I've gone from using like 3 8 up to about a half inch. And I actually have found that that works the best in most situations so I'm about a half inch from the bottom reservoir to the top of the pot stand so burn to the the pot stand about a half an inch um, and I haven't had any issues with that I also made one exactly like that gave it to Justin Tidwell because he and I shared a campsite down at the Texas hang and uh, he has since used it several times and said that it, it fixed all the problems that he had had with it, that it was just the uh, the reservoir was too small. So it was what was happening was, and there, there was a second piece to this equation that may, may be part of yours too. Uh, don't have that windscreen in really tight. Make sure that there's enough air to, to still vent because if that overheats and it is too, if you fill it too much and it gets too hot, the fuel itself will start to boil and when it does it will spurt so keep the windscreen I'd say two-thirds to three-quarters of the way around don't enclose it completely but just have it so that it's blocking the, the upwind side so as long as it's blocking the upwind side completely you can have the other side open and it's gonna do the it's doing what it's intended to do which is block the wind uh, when you have it completely enclosed, it just heats it all up a little bit too much. And that's that's a little bit of the problem with an, an alcohol stove that doesn't have some sort of wick. So give that a try. Create another one that's a little bit taller reservoir. Go with a half inch uh, between the, the top of the reservoir and the burner or the pot stand. And I think I think you're going to get a better, a better burn. With the uh, windscreen, go with the three quarters of the way around just blocking the upwind side and I think I think you're gonna find that it works a little bit better if not let me know and we'll see what we can do and the fancy feast is a good stove all right this is from Jeff Belmont how long does it take you to start a fire without a magnesium stick with just wood you should always start with back to the basics I have done very few just wood fires you know bow drill or hand drill um, I've made bow drills by taking shoelaces out now if you can't find it's not easy you know rubbing two sticks together to start a fire just isn't isn't as easy as some people may make it out to be uh, you know there are there are survivalists out there that have a really really hard time with it so an average person starting a fire with two sticks is going to be a daunting, daunting task. Now there are people, so there's some cheating that goes on here a lot. There are a lot of people that already have their base stick or, or their base piece of wood with a notch cut out of it already done when they go out in the woods and they have a socket that they can use. Some of them even go out there with the uh, actual drill so the, the rod that goes between the, the base plate and the socket which you're using so that 
it has something to spin on already pre-made if you're doing that why not just carry it lighter it's gonna be lighter uh, so I've made very few fires doing it that way and I don't think I've ever done it just by going out and finding that stuff in the woods if you have awesome put together a video send it my way I'll I'll put it into one of my videos I like a lighter all right Chris Gherkin if you were forced to one rig one tarp hammock top quilt and under quilt and pack what would they be so this kind of goes along with Chris's question and a little bit with uh, let's see Alex Banks question if I was to pick one setup Appalachian ultralight pack the Darien I think I may have said Raven at one point dream hammock Darien the top and under quilt that correspond to the weather uh, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say zero degree because if it's 60 degrees out I'm not using a zero degree and likewise I'm not gonna say the 50 degree set because if it's 20 degrees I'm sure as hell not using that so that and then uh, you know if I'm if I'm on a, a trip where I'm gonna be doing a lot of lounging you know a lot of the trips that I do are ultralight and I try and pack in some good miles this weekend our longest day was like 13 and a half miles with the shortest being about eight miles in the winter those are good distances for me in the summer those type of distances would put you into camp with just hours and hours of daylight to spare uh, so you want something like a, a hatchling to uh, to relax and kick back in if you guys don't know what a hatchling is go check out Terrapin Outfitters go check out my video on the hatchling XL review awesome piece of gear cool to lounge in next one from Chris now that you're back in okay are we going to get to see some bike packing trips we actually were talking about that this weekend so before even reading this I know that it was out there uh, on Facebook and I may have I may have seen it but actually beekeeper and I were were discussing it because he and I we used to coach together we rode together now we backpack together uh, but we were actually talking about it. We talked about it in the in the past. There was a three or four day bike packing group trip thing down in Florida or Georgia or something that he had mentioned at one point we'd consider doing. And it's still out there as an, an idea. I'm not sure when or where, but it's definitely something we've we've given some thought to. From Will Giddens, when backpacking, do you have one main go to pack that you use? Or do you use different packs depending on the outing and season? So, kind of goes along with a lot of the other questions and, and the Appalachian Ultralight. Uh, as long as it lives up to my expectations based on the one that I've already owned from them, I think that that's probably 90% of the time my go-to. There are going to be some trips and I'm probably going to have to end up purchasing a new pack. I'm probably going to have to sell some gear in order to get a bigger pack because there are going to be some colder weather trips where I have to carry a bear canister and it's just not going to fit in a 35 or, or 40 liter pack uh, like this weekend I had my 20 degree quilt set I had some clothes a couple of extra jackets quite a bit of food because it was a three day and we did we did a lot more food than than normal because I did some actual cooking some baking out there on the trail so carrying a little more than usual I had a bigger pot set because I was doing baking I had a, a an insulated mug but because I was carrying all that I used the CDT and it was absolutely packed I could not have fit anything more in the pack than what I had especially after you put in all of my camera gear tripod mics all that stuff so it does kind of depend on the season however the one that I need and want for that winter with a bear canister I don't own yet if anyone has any suggestions for one I know since I have ULA a ULA ohm or circuit or something along those lines is gonna come up several times but hey if you guys have any ideas or know someone that that's starting up a 
backpack company that needs some gear tested? I know a guy. All right, so the next one, John Phillips. What's a good way to carry seasonings on the trail? Any good ideas? Salt, pepper, and something spicy, not a whole spice cabinet. All right, so there are a lot of different ways that you can go. Uh, if you do regular film and have those old film canister things, you could use something like that. I'm sure that if you go to like an REI, you can get little spice kits. Uh, you can go to the store and get little spice kits that have, you know, just one little, one little shaker, but it's got like eight different compartments in it that you can turn the little shaker thing to. Uh, so that could work. Another way that is cheaper is when you go to McDonald's or Chick-fil-A and you've purchased a meal grab some of the little condiment things they've got little salt and pepper things that you can you can get grab those things and have them for when you go out real lightweight you only get like a single serving of each one um, you know you can get little single serving of just about every hot sauce that's out there you can get in just like a the same thing as like a little ketchup packet so that's kind of my suggestion on which way to go there Richard Gods will you be reviewing the hottest new item on YouTube the pack pillow so I wasn't aware this was the hottest new item on YouTube someone forgot to get me in on this um, so is this I, I guess this is my ignorance coming out is this a specific pack pillow that people are reviewing that's out there that like all the cool youtubers I got left off for a, an obvious reason I guess uh, is there a specific one that people are using or are we just talking about reviewing a pack pillow because I've got a few different pack pillows and I can review them contrast them talk about them um, maybe that's a video someone wants to watch is it if so let me know this not really a question from Will Giddens. Hey, if you ever need any help testing out gear, let me know. It's actually not a bad idea, Will. So here's what I'm thinking. So I met Will down at the Texas Hang. So he's down at Texas. I'm in Oklahoma. Two states butt up to each other. So here's kind of my idea on this. So I'm doing a lot of testing of gear, and I'm trying it out, and I'm talking about what I like about it, what I dislike about it, but it's just one person's opinion on things. It's just my opinion. I'm not an expert, I'm not talking about, I mean, everything is subjective. So it probably wouldn't hurt to meet up with some of these people, get out on trips, and take some of that gear that I've reviewed, loan it to them for the trip so that they can test it out and give me their feedback and their opinions, and we can talk about it on camera and get that out there. So Will, not a bad idea, something we might have to do. All right, one last question, and I think we may actually make it through this. So this question actually comes from the most attractive person on this list by far. Um, yeah, this one comes from Stacy Orton. Are you done moving your family from state to state? Inquiring minds want to know. So a little backstory, I was military, moved around quite a bit. Since getting out of the military, I've kind of kept up that lifestyle of moving every couple of years, and my family is sick of it. They're done. Honestly, I'm done too. Uh, I just needed to be in a place where I felt appreciated, I was listened to, that my opinion mattered, that I felt like I was doing something worthwhile. I think I'm there. I really do. I really think that things are good. I think that I'm in a better place. I think that that, that shows in how I, I feel, uh, how things are going. So, yes, sweetie, I am trying. I'm trying to keep this, make this one our last one. Make this our, our forever place. Maybe not forever home. We'll see. We're going to spend a lot of money in it. But, um anyway that uh i hope that answers your question question um, but yeah i am hoping that this is our final move and we get to stay here for quite a while so guys that is uh is the question and answer if you've got any additional questions you want to throw them out there feel free uh 
we'll probably do another one of these at some point. But as your questions come up, you guys know I always try and answer them within a few days, if not the first week. Um, feel free to shoot me a message on Facebook. Find me over there. Shoot it to Spagiver Backpacking. Always checking that one. And guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you guys working with me and giving me some questions to talk about. And I hope that you enjoy this. I will see you guys down the trail. Thank you.